So what are you guys? We're part of the Sparkwood family! Hi guys, so the point of this video is to get you the midterm one material as quickly as possible for a vector. You know, people often say you think of a vector as a guy that has magnitude and direction, and that's totally fine, but I want to keep it super mellow and think of them as arrows, okay? Now, the two things we can do here. Say like I've got this guy, and pretend that this guy has the same direction, oh, close enough, and the same length or same magnitude. You guys agree, what we're usually taught in classes is that these guys are the same, but you don't have to do that. So one option is you can think, well, even though they have the same magnitude and direction, this guy's physically here, and this guy's over there, and those are not the same guys. So these guys can actually be thought of as different vectors. Um, and that's fine, but you know, if you go on and do more of this junk, and you talk about like tangent bubbles and stuff like that, this idea does kind of come up, or it definitely comes up. But um, for us, and definitely for this course, we're going to assume that if you have the same direction and the same magnitude, you are the same guy. So as far as we're concerned, this vector here, A, and let's say A prime, these are the same vector. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to basically make life easy by using good notation. So let's say right here, this vector went from 0, 0 to 1, 1. Okay? Now let's say this guy over here, uh, say randomly, sorry, 1.2, 0.8, uh, up to whatever this is, 2.2, 1.8. Okay. okay, let's trust for the moment these guys are identical vectors. Okay? Now, uh, it's much easier looking at a guy like this than like that because if you anchor the guy at the origin, it's always going to be the origin, right? So really to describe the vector, all you'd have to give is basically where the head ends up, right? And here it's at 1, 1. So, you know, different people write different ways. Some people write like this, talk about the vector whose head ends at 1, 1. Or you can write it like this, same thing, okay? Where basically you have xy coordinates and xy coordinates, okay? No big deal. Um, I'm going to be lazy. I'm probably going to flip between the two. But for the moment, I'm going to use this notation, okay? All right. Uh, notice that you can't really do that with this guy, at least not ostensibly, because you if have you have two sets of coordinates, you need both to describe this guy, right? But a mellow way to do it is, since these vectors are equivalent, right, never talk about him in this form. Always take him, drag him down to here, and always talk about him in this form. So you could literally use a single set of coordinates to describe the entire vector, okay? All right, so how are we going to do that? Um, instead of doing this deeply, I'm going to do it really cheap. Just literally imagine taking this guy and dragging this down and dragging that down. That's all we're going to do, okay? First part's easy. If you want to take this guy to 0, 0, you need to subtract 1.2 and you need to subtract 0.8, right? But if you do that for this point, you need to do it for every single point and definitely at the end, right? So that would become uh, minus 1.2 and minus 0.8. And then we can verify that we were right because if you look at this, we're going to get 1 here and 1 there. And that's 1, 1. And that's exactly where it should be, okay? All right, so I get it. If we wanted a general formula, I don't know if we need a formula for this, but just in case. Two coordinates, let's say... Uh, the tail at a1, b1, and the head at a2, b2, right? How would you take this guy and bring him back down to the organ? Just to drag him down, you would subtract a1 and b1 from the tail to drag it all the way down to the origin. And that's not really an issue because we're always going to assume the tail is at the origin, right? But what about the tip? How are we going to get the tip? Well, if you subtract a1 and b1, you need to do the same thing over here. So you need to subtract a1 from the x-coordinate, so a2 minus a1, and you need to subtract b1 from the y-coordinate, so b2 minus b1. Okay, so with this, this single set of coordinates, right, we can now describe that same vector. Okay, and we're going to take it for granted, unless otherwise specified, that this notation is in play. Okay, so no big deal. All right. Okay, uh, we're not going to go about proving this or anything like that. Just a quick, quick review, because I'm pretty sure most of you are comfortable with this. But let's talk about how we add vectors first. So I guess number one, we should talk about addition. Okay, so here's our vector A, and here's our vector B, and I want to add them. And I want to add them across... Okay, well one thing is we made this stuff up. So we're going to define vector algebra the way we're about to, but why do you want to define it this way? Because it's practical, it's actually usable, say, in physics. You don't need so if you know any physics to do this, because I'm going to intro it, but it's good to kind of link the two, okay? And um, when we do the vector calculus theorems, probably in the next series coming up, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to frame it two ways. One in which we just purely do the math, and another in which I set that framing up in physics, okay? Because uh, I think it's just the most natural way to frame it. Okay, but anyway, so here, if you imagine this is a push, right? So first I push you along this way, and then I push you along that way, right? Where have you been pushed all together? Well, we'll just first walk along the first guy. First I push you like this, then I push you like that, right? And it's always from where you start to where you end up. And that's how we're gonna sum these two vectors. Remember, everything's fair. This vector and that vector are considered the same, right? Because even though we always represent stuff with guys based at the origin, technically these vectors are the same. 
So all I did was I took A and I added it to B, where B is literally the same as this guy. So first you walk along one, then you walk along the other. From where you start to where you end up, that's always what the vector is doing for you. Okay? So, okay? so if we wrote this on coordinates, do you agree that if I we wrote this thing out, let's write this. This guy's x coordinate is a1, and this guy's y coordinate is b1. And then it's going to look a little bad, my bad. But if you look at the original b we have here, this guy's b co x coordinate is a2, and let's call his non-existent y coordinate b2. Okay. So the picture is more confusing. Uh, I think if we just say in a word, it's going to be mellow. Do you agree that if I want to compute from here to here, what we can do is this: first walk along what a does for you, left to right. Then walk along what B does for you, left to right. And when you add them up, you will get the total horizontal distance covered from left to right. Everybody agree? OK, so it makes sense that for this guy, its x coordinate is actually going to be a1 plus a2. Because first you walk along one guy, then you walk along the second guy, you put them together, and you, and get, then you the get the total horizontal movement. OK? All right, so uh, does that work in the y direction? Yeah, it totally does. So if you look at this guy, so first with, for a, first we push you up by this amount and then B pushes you up nothing. And if you put them together, you get the total push along the entire walk, right, from here to there. Okay. So I guess for the Y coordinate, it's going to be B1 plus B2. Okay. No big deal. I just want to give you visual justification for this. So really what you're doing when you're adding vectors is you're walking along one and you're walking along the other, right? And it makes sense if you go along from one to the other, right? Then it's from where you start to where you end up. If you add each guy separately, you will get the total. And that works for both left to right and up and down or in this case, x coordinates and y coordinates. If you extend it to three dimensions, it works for the z coordinate as well, okay? All right, so um, I guess that's it. So how do we write this in notation? So if we take the vector a1, b1, and we add it to the vector a2, b2, then we'll get the vector a1 plus b, a2, b1 plus b2. Okay. okay, not too bad, right? You know, if you feel really comfortable with this, of course, you can just skip ahead. Um, usually the first real topic that comes up is the dot product, and I'm going to do that in a slightly different way, so you might want to hop to that if you're okay with this. But um, I still want to cover this because I think it's important. So number two, let's talk about scalar multiplication. Scalar multiplication is nice. It's what do you think you think it is. So if you were to just guess, here's my vector a, right? What do you think 2a looks like? If you just had a guess, right? Your sense is if this is a, 2a should be what? Kind of like the same guy, but twice as big, right? So that's what we're going to do. Make it twice as big. You now have 2a. Okay? What about 1 half of a? It would be the same guy, but maybe what now? Maybe half as big. Okay? The only question that really comes up is if this is a, then what is negative a? Somebody agree? So if you want to think of negative a, the way to think of it is negative a is literally the same guy, just the opposite direction. Okay? Okay. So a quick word on this. How do you compute this guy component by component? That's actually not that bad. Well, it seems like if you want, want to make A twice as big and keep him in the same direction, every, the components are set up the same way. You just make everybody twice as big, right? And what's really happening there is you can imagine if you had um, right triangles, for example. So if you had a right triangle like this. So if you look along this guy, you're thinking left to right, up and down. Do you agree that if you doubled everything, you scaled it, you made this twice as long and twice as high, you keep that same orientation, right? Same direction, basically, right? It would just be twice as big, okay? So similar triangles is really gives it to you, but I think it's pretty believable that if you take some scalar, let's call it um, alpha, and you multiply it against the vector, a1, b1, right? Then what you're going to end up with is alpha a1 and alpha b1, okay? I mean, it's what you think is going to be the case, okay? And that applies whether that scalar is 2 or a half or whatever, okay? It also actually applies if this guy is negative. Because do you agree that if we were going, say, to 1, 1, and then instead we were to flip the direction, you want to keep everything the same, even the length the same, right? But if you just literally multiply everything by negative 1, then you'd have the opposite orientation. Okay, so I guess it shouldn't be number 1. This should be a guiding principle here. Okay, so, so far we have vector addition, kind of follow knows it works. We have uh, scalar multiplication. This also kind of works the way we expect it to, right? Um, luckily for us, as a quick drill, we can now put together and get subtraction. Okay, so how does subtraction work? Okay, so let's keep it mellow and see what we can do. Uh, let's say I have a vector A, and we want and a vector B, and we want it to now take A minus B, okay? 
what does this guy look like? So um, I'll show you the way I prefer, which is kind of like this. You just do what we've already learned. We know how to take A, right? And by the way, the meaning of A minus B, we're going to decide because we're making this stuff up. So in some sense, we want it to follow regular arithmetic. So what I want to do is define A minus B as A plus negative B. Okay, we're going to define it that way. So if you define it that way, that means first you walk along A, then you don't walk along B, but you walk along the flip of B. Same magnitude, opposite direction. So first you walk along one. Sorry, they're not proportionate anymore, but just pretend. Okay, so this would be minus B. And remember, when you add vectors, it's always first you walk along one, then the other, always from where you start to where you end up. So this is our vector A minus B. And that makes sense, right? Because when you think of, for example, 1, oops, minus 2, you can think of that as 1 plus negative 2, okay? Which would be minus 1. Okay. Uh, that's also, well, that also gives us inspiration for why you define um, b, negative b to be the flip of b, okay? Because you always want it to be the case in regular arithmetic that if you take 2 and you add it to negative 2, you better get 0, right? So if you take any vector in space, let's say this guy, do you agree that if you take him and you add it to the negative of him, then you should get zero, right? But the, but the only way to get that is to have you walk along this guy, let's call this guy B, and then you'd have to walk this way. But we, if we define negative B to be same magnitude, opposite direction, that's always going to be the case that if you walk along one, then the other, you start here, you end here, it should be zero. So that's one of the inspirations for defining negative B to be the flip of B, okay? All right, so um, anyway, so I get it, subtraction works. Some, some people don't like this, there's a shortcut. And the way to do the shortcut, though I kind of screwed up because I didn't keep it proportionate, let's pretend B is like this, is to kind of follow the same pattern. So if you had, say, like, 5 minus 3 is equal to 2, so this is an alternate way to interpret this, uh, it's that, what is 5 minus 3? Well, 5 minus 3 is a number you have to add to 3 to get 5, right? So the quantity 5 minus 3 is 2, but if you take 2 and add it to 3, you will get 5. Okay, so I have my vector A and B. So what we're saying is, what is the vector that you add to B to get A? So for us, that's going to tell the following. I mean, that means first you walk along B, so you drag your butt along B. And now that you've dragged your butt along B, you're wondering, okay, what do I have to do to get from here to where A would take me? And in that case, it would be this, right? You have yep. to drag your butt from here to here to get to where A would have taken you. Does everybody agree? But if you notice, this is the same as this. Okay, so uh, different ways to visualize. Most props don't make a big deal of this. They just want you to get the idea and understand what's going on. So do it any way you like. Um, I personally prefer the first way we did it, but you can do it any way you want, obviously.